Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Coast Guard and the Coast Guard Auxiliary Student Programs Directorate and the Auxiliary University Programs Division, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the chartering ceremony of the Coast Guard Auxiliary's University Programs Unit at Maine Maritime Academy. I'm Auxilarist Russ Gazdia. I'm the branch chief of the Auxiliary University's program and will be your master of ceremony. We are honored to have many distinguished guests in attendance today from Maine Maritime Academy, as well as the Coast Guard, including senior auxiliary leadership and various Coast Guard command representatives. Thank you for being here to celebrate. This is an important occasion for the Coast Guard and Maine Maritime. And thank you for the support that you provide to the cadets of the Auxiliary University Programs Unit here. At this time, I ask that you turn off your cell phones or place them in silent mode. I think I have. The official party for today's ceremony consists of Division Chief Jim Stevens, Coast Guard Auxiliary University Programs Division, U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary. Captain Richard Schultz, Chief of Prevention, U.S. Coast Guard First District. Captain John Cashman, Commandant of Midshipmen, Maine Maritime Academy and Rear Admiral John Mauger, Commander, 1st District, U.S. Coast Guard. Now please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of colors. Official party arriving. Present the colors. Please be seated. Thank you, Midshipman Ledoux, for that wonderful rendition. Thank you.
I would like to introduce our first speaker, Captain John Cashman, the Commandant of Midshipmen. Captain Cashman assumed duties as Commandant of Midshipmen in August 2019. He served 20 years in the Coast Guard, leading domestic law enforcement missions, search and rescue teams, and advising on military, operational, and administrative law issues. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Captain Cashman. Good evening. It is absolutely a thrill to see so many current and former colleagues, so much Coast Guard Blue in the audience, and Admiral for you being here. I do appreciate it. So with that, I extend a personal welcome to all of our distinguished guests, Commander of the 1st Coast Guard District, Admiral John Mauger, the 1st District Chief of Prevention, Captain Richard Schultz, and the immediate past Commodore, Mr. Byron Moe. On behalf of Maine Maritime Academy's President, Admiral Jerry Paul, welcome to Castine. I also extend a welcome to our staff, faculty, family members, members of the Coast Guard who have joined us this evening as we celebrate the recognition of Maine Maritime Academy's Coast Guard Auxiliary University program. As with any initiative, it takes tireless effort of dedicated people to ensure the program flourishes. At times, it may seem improbable. At other times, it may appear to grow too quickly. But with the right nourishing, the program flourishes to be more than even those dedicated volunteers could have ever imagined. Those who persevered to get our program started and who will continue to tend to it include Auxiliarist Russ Gastia, Auxiliarist Davida Kellogg, Lieutenant Owen Mems, our unit rep, Lieutenant Commander Kelly Gualteri, our liaison, and Midshipman First Class Haley Kent, our AUP unit leader. Ms. Kent, along with this core group of students here tonight, recognized the value to themselves, to our school, and to our nation. They accepted the challenge of starting a new program and allowed themselves to be guided through the process by those who I just named. I will talk about the specifics of the program in a few moments, but before I do, I want to touch upon the overall positive impact the Coast Guard AUP program has on Maine Maritime Academy. Our students enroll to receive a quality education focused on marine and related programs. Our curriculum empowers students to take on leadership roles, encourages rigorous self-discipline, promotes curiosity, and provides graduates with the skills, ethics, and knowledge needed to succeed in the global economy. Our students come here already with a sense of duty and service. On a very local level, Many of our students are members of the Volunteer Fire Department. Most of those students were also firefighters and EMTs in their hometowns. A significant number of Maine Maritime Academy students have joined the Maine National Guard. Others are service veterans or are currently serving in one of the reserve components. Once here at the school, we do offer a robust Naval Reserve Officer Training Corps for students pursuing active and reserve commissions in the Navy and the Marine Corps, or who seek designation as a Strategic Sea Lift Officer through our Strategic Sea Lift Midshipman Program. But what we have not had until now is a structured pathway for someone interested in serving in the United States Coast Guard or Coast Guard Auxiliary. Our students yearn for opportunities to serve their community. Through the dedication of those I mentioned earlier, Maine Maritime Academy can now offer that clear direction. Now, let me take a few moments to better describe the Auxiliary University Program, or AUP for short. But first, a bit of Coast Guard history. In response to an increase in recreational boating through the 1930s, there was a clear need for boater education 
on seamanship and federal law, and a desire to establish a volunteer arm of the service. Congress created the Coast Guard Reserve on the 23rd of June, 1939. At that time, it was the volunteer component of the U.S. Coast Guard. Boat owners were organized into flotillas, and those were further organized into divisions within, within each Coast Guard district. In February of 1941, a military reserve force was created, and the then volunteer Coast Guard Reserve was renamed the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary. That auxiliary grew to a force of over 50,000 volunteers during World War II. That was the core of the reserve membership. Those members took on security patrols of bridges, docks, beaches, fought fires, guided naval vessels, and conducted anti-submarine surveillance. But by the 1950s, the Coast Guard Auxiliary was able to return to its roots of public education, operations, vessel examinations, and fellowship. The Coast Guard Auxiliary annually trains tens of thousands of boaters in seamanship, piloting, rules of the road, weather analysis, and other maritime topics. Qualified coxswains and their crew conduct search and rescue and support other Coast Guard missions. Auxiliary pilots and air observers search for boaters in distress, patrol waterways looking for floating hazards, environmental pollution, and stranded vessels. Communication specialists handle distress calls, and vessel examiners conduct vessel safety checks of recreational boats. Since 1996, the Coast Guard Auxiliary's role has expanded to allow its members to assist in any Coast Guard mission, with the minor exception of law enforcement and military operations. Thus, Coast Guard Auxiliaries can be found alongside members of the active component as a key part of Team Coast Guard. Now, when I say any Coast Guard mission, I do not exaggerate. In any given day, the Coast Guard Auxiliary averaged more than one life saved, assisted 28 others, completed 62 safety patrols, performed 300 vessel safety checks, educated 360 new boaters, participated in 100 Coast Guard operational support missions, attended 70 public affairs functions, and much, much more. So over the course of a year, that amounts to 445 lives saved, 12,700 people assisted, and over 36 million in property protected. Clearly, the nation gets more than its value from this all-volunteer force. Today, the Coast Guard Auxiliary is 22,000 members strong. Collectively, they operate 5,000 private vessels, 225 personal aircraft, and cover 2,600 communication stations. So why have I spent so much time lauding the Coast Guard Auxiliary? Well, because in addition to all that I mentioned, the Auxiliary gives our Maine Maritime Academy students the opportunity to join this organization while in college, to train alongside members of the Coast Guard, to learn lifelong leadership skills, and explore opportunities for, serve, for future service in an active reserve or auxiliary capacity. Unlike the other branches of the United States military, the Coast Guard does not have a reserve officer training corps. So to meet the need of 500 new officers each year, the Coast Guard relies upon the Coast Guard Academy in New London, Connecticut for about 200 of those officers. And the remaining come up through either prior enlisted or college students entering through one of the officer commissioning programs. But even with those programs, the need is not always met. This is where the Coast Guard Auxiliary University program can help close the gap and why expanding to Maine Maritime Academy and other schools is so vital. AUP graduates who sought Coast Guard commissions historically have had a 70% acceptance rate into the commissioning programs. Compare that to only 3% of applicants from other colleges and universities. In fact, in the past three years, we have seen an acceptance rate jump to 88% for AUP graduates. So clearly, 
the preparation and experience gained by being an AUP graduate significantly increases the chances of earning a commission into the Coast Guard. The ever-increasing need for officer candidates extends to all Coast Guard mission sets, including surface and air operations, environmental protection, marine science, marine safety, engineering, and homeland security. Thus, the Coast Guard AUP is perfect match for Maine Maritime Academy. Think about it with me. The mission of the Auxiliary University program is to be a valuable, modern, and flexible model to attract, develop, mentor, and retain academically focused members of the United States Coast Guard and Coast Guard Auxiliary. This is done through sustaining mission excellence by providing new, talented, educated, dedicated, diverse, and well-trained leaders, and building capacity through academic outreach, engagement, and related activities that support the needs of the Auxiliary, the Coast Guard, and the Department of Homeland Security. The seamless collaboration of the Coast Guard Auxiliary and the Coast Guard, with the Coast Guard Reserve and active duty components is what allows the Auxiliary University program to be so successful. Our students in the Coast Guard AUP receive training that includes introduction to incident management, including certification in ICS 100, 200, 700, and 800, boating safety, cybersecurity, and leadership courses focused on leading self and others. Sound familiar? Advanced study continues with the Coast Guard specific missions, bridge resource management, and general Coast Guard principles of leadership and management. A student who progresses to the level of a senior in the unit will culminate their training through an internship with an active duty Coast Guard unit. Students who qualify are permanently noted as AUP graduates. And those who strive to excel may also attain the level of AUP graduate with distinction. That recognizes those who achieve an exemplary level of leadership and academic performance while enrolled in the AUP. Ultimately, the Coast Guard AUP is a leadership development program whose participants adhere to the customs rooted in the Coast Guard's guiding principles as expressed through the Coast Guard's core values and the AUP motto of leaders in service. Clearly, Maine Maritime Academy is the right host for the AUP, given the drive of our students to lead in service to others and to our nation. The support that all of you are displaying by being here tonight establishes the foundation upon which our program will thrive. Thank you so much for sharing in this journey. He's hired. Thank you very much for your support, Captain. Um, you were one of the first people I reached out to, and uh, you opened the door for so much support across your faculty. It's been incredible, so thank you very much. Now, before we proceed with the official chartering of the unit, I, I do want to share with the audience what's transpired for the past year and a half, I think a little bit more. Um, very well described by the captain is sometimes you think you'll get there and sometimes you think you won't. My involvement started in the spring of 2021, actually almost two years ago. I was supporting member, members of the Casco Bay Auxiliary Flotilla outside of Portland, of which a few are here tonight, thank you. And they were trying to actually build an awareness uh, and an initiative at the University of Southern Maine for an AUP unit. Well, they told me about a young auxiliarist who had just graduated high school, had been accepted to the Maine Maritime Academy, was already basically qualified status in the auxiliary, and he learned about the AUP program, and he wanted to know how to get involved. So I got in touch with him. That member, Midshipman Ethan Dorval, right here, we connected, we had him apply to the auxiliary university program. He participated via our remote virtual unit, which a student can do if there's no unit at their school. But he and I discussed how he could be the driving force behind building awareness across the campus 
and identify someone in the faculty who could support this effort. Soon after, his hair started to grow back after his initial few weeks at school, and he got settled into his first semester. He connected me with a faculty member who could help, and that was Lieutenant Commander Kelly Gualtieri, Deputy Commandant for Leadership Development. I connected with the Lieutenant Commander, and from the start, she has been nothing short of fantastic. She and Midshipman Dorval pulled together several informational sessions that allowed me to conduct sessions via Zoom that resulted in several midshipmen and students coming forward with interest in joining the auxiliary and the AUP. Next, we needed a local auxiliarist because I'm on Cape Cod and it's quite a drive. I was connected to Dr. Davida Kellogg, an auxiliarist with over 30 years of dedicated volunteer service to the auxiliary. When we connected, I found out that she had been previously on the national staff of the AUP. She was involved with assisting with internship programs, and she was actually involved with trying to start an AUP unit here several years ago. Dr. Kellogg, to put it very mildly, was very excited to re-engage and work towards a standalone unit. I'm building a team. But next, we needed a Coast Guard officer to assist. Dr. Kellogg had just the officer in mind, a Maine Maritime Academy alumnus. We were connected with Lieutenant Mims and found out that prior to attending Maine Maritime, he had actually been a plank owner in the Auburn University AUP. Think about that. How lucky do you get? So Lieutenant Mims and I spent some time on the phone. And I was feeling really good about the team that was going to be formed at Maine Maritime to support this endeavor. Now, while he's assigned to Sector Virginia, with today's technology, we were very confident that he'd be available to mentor and assist, and on occasion, visit to campus. So we're fulfilling that promise. And uh, the reality is, it's, it's been great to have this team. Now, one of our first midshipmen to show interest was Midshipman Kent. She came forward and quickly demonstrated self-initiative, a sincere desire to take full advantage of the AUP program, and study, as well as other opportunities that were available. She earned senior status in a matter of months. She interned this past summer at the Coast Guard Station in Provincetown. She worked towards boat crew qualification on their 29 and 47 foot boats. She even got to go out on a three day patrol on a 110 foot coastal patrol cutter, the Tybee, out of Woods Hole. As a result of her efforts and accomplishments and her natural leadership skills, Midshipman Kent was selected to be the AUP unit leader. The recruiting continued, and during the spring and into this past semester, with one year, we went from a single brand new midshipman to 17 members now participating, and we have a standalone unit. <laughs> that is, by definition, the ripple effect. Midshipman Dorval. Well done. Now we're going to move to the presentation of the chartering document. As I call your name, would you please come up to stage and fill in this area here. Lieutenant Owen Mims, AUP unit officer. Auxiliarist Davida Kellogg, auxiliary unit liaison. Lieutenant Commander Kelly Gualtieri, AUP unit faculty advisor and midshipman Haley Kent, AUP unit leader. You can stay right in the middle. If the official party would please rise. And now to present the chartering document, I'd like to introduce Division Chief Jim Stevens. Good evening. I'm auxiliarist. Oops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm auxiliarist Jim Stevens. I'm the National Division Chief of the Auxiliary University Programs. The Auxiliary University Programs Division falls under the Auxiliary Students Programs Dir Directorate. On behalf of the Director of the Program, Student Programs Directorate, it is my pleasure to present the official certificate of charter for the Maine Maritime Academy. Coast Guard Auxiliary Unit Programs. 
program yeah. unit. Yes. Uh, the certificate reads, Certificate of Charter, United States Coast Guard Aux Auxiliary University Programs is, pre is presented to Maine Maritime Academy on this day of establishment as a standalone unit of the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary University Programs for the purpose of educating and developing leaders for tomorrow's United States Coast Guard and the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary. Signed, Jean Marie McNamara, Director, Student Programs Directorate, United States Coast Guard Auxiliary, 14 September, 2022. Congratulations and welcome aboard. Okay, you can, uh, if the uh, official party and everyone would stay up here. Um, if I could also, okay, that, you stay right here, that's good, okay. So there's a maritime tradition where a member of a ship's crew who was around when the ship was being built and commissioned had bragging rights to the ownership of one of the planks on the main deck. Originally, this term applied only to crew members that were present at a ship's commissioning. Today, plank owner status is also applied to members of newly commissioned units. Those students who are currently officially enrolled into the Coast Guard Auxiliary or their applications are in process will be entitled to be recognized as a plank owner of the Norwich, excuse me, of the Maine Maritime. Oh. Hey, I've been good so far. <laughs> of the Maine Maritime, Maine Maritime, Maine Maritime, AUP. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so listen very carefully, and I think uh, we're going to go alphabetically, so I wish I had the uh, bosun to lead the way here, the bosun's mate. But when I call your name, if you could go to the back towards the photographer behind the camera, down that side to Mr. Stevens, he's going to hand you your plank and then come through the receiving line and find your seat. If for some reason you get the wrong one, it's like throwing a cap at graduation, find where your plank owner certificate is at the end. So with that, we'll begin. Midshipman Rebecca Baker. Midshipman Dustin Burton. Kylie Cantlin. Darby Sedoma. Midshipman Chase. Midshipman Dorval. Jackson Field. Midshipman Heath. Midshipman Hughes. Midshipman Kent. Midshipman Lollamandia. <laughs> Where is he? I saw him earlier. There he is. Bosun's mate, third class, MacArthur. Midshipman Manning. Midshipman Nowalski. Nicholas Palu, Aiden Vietsky, and Midshipman Williamson. I think we got everyone. Oh, yeah, I got her first. I got everyone. Okay. They ran up without me uh, introducing them. I'm to cover them when I get down. You might have given tents. We'll find them at the end. Like I said, check the certificates and we'll, we'll figure it out at the end. I, I didn't get a chance uh, to introduce some of the other uh, individuals at the end there, but joining us is uh, 
Immediate past Commodore Byron Moe from the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary, 1st District Northern. Bosun Elijah Reynolds, Operations Training Officer, 1st District Northern. Commander Christina Sullivan, the Director of Auxiliary, 1st District Northern. And Commander Megan Druniak, Deputy Commander, Sector in Northern New England. Thank you for being here. Okay, if everyone could return to their seats except for the official party and Midshipman Kent. Well, now my job is done. The keel has been laid, the ship has been built, and it's ready to sail. The main maritime AUP unit is officially chartered, the crew has been recognized, and the leadership team is in place to ensure its success. I am confident that a long and wider blue line into the Coast Guard will be coming from Maine Maritime for years to come. With that, I have unit leader, Midshipman Kent, next to me. It's been my pleasure working with you. You have been commended for your steadfast dedication and desire to see this unit become a reality. I wish you all the best now and into the future. Unit leader Kent, you now have the watch. So before introducing um, Rear Admiral Mauger, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who is attending this event, um, and also how absolutely honored I am to be standing up in front of you and to welcome in this new unit. Um, I know I can speak for all the students here, as well as myself, on how excited we are to be a part of this and how we are looking forward greatly to our futures in the Coast Guard. I also want to say a huge thank you to Lieutenant Mims, <coughs> Excuse me, Lieutenant Commander Gualtieri, Dr. Kellogg, and of course, Resquez Dia for getting this started. We, we all wouldn't be here without you, so thank you very much. So thank you all for giving your time to be here. It's very much appreciated. Rear Admiral Mauger assumed, duties, assumed the duties of Commander, 1st Coast Guard District, in May 2022. He oversees all Coast Guard missions across eight states in the Northeast, including over 2,000 miles of coastline from the U.S.-Canadian border to northern New Jersey and 1,300 miles offshore. Rear Admiral Mauger has a career in prevention and has a cybersecurity background, one being the Director of Training and Exercises as U.S. Cyber Command. Without further ado, I welcome Rear Admiral Mauger. So <laughs> Thank you. All right, Levi, for our AV folks, am I going to ruin you if I walk around a little bit, or am I stuck behind the podium? I can walk around? The mic, as long as I have it. All right. It's tough being stuck behind a podium here. Hey, um, first and foremost, President Paul, Admiral, thank you so much for uh, all the support from Maine Maritime uh, and... Uh, and uh, the, the welcome that we've received here. This has been uh, just truly awesome. And so I've got a couple of quick messages um, for uh, the folks on this side of the room and especially for the folks on this side of the room, all right? In the background though, you just got a couple of pictures that are going up. I'm not gonna talk to them, but they're, entitled, or they're intended to get you excited about the opportunities ahead uh, for our folks on this side of the room to reflect on some of the opportunities uh, that you've had and some of the excitement of uh, our organization. So they're just gonna go in the background and play a little bit. And so if I start droning on, just take a look at the pictures <laughs> over there and uh, enjoy yourselves, all right? But I'll try and keep this short and hopefully we can get into a little bit of uh, question and discussion. And so in addition to uh, President Admiral Paul here, uh, I'd like to just uh, thank some of the other folks that have come out. Commodore Mo, uh, thanks so much for your leadership up here in uh, D1 Northern Region. You know, uh, Haley talked about uh, the first Coast Guard District, right? 2,000 miles of coastline, eight different states, right? You know, that's 11,000 women and men that work in the first Coast Guard District. And what's really special and unique about that is 5,500 of them, 50% of those women and men don't even get a paycheck. Right? 
They don't even ask for one, right? That's our volunteer auxiliary force. And you heard a little bit from Captain Cashman about all the amazing things that our auxiliary do. But in addition to all those amazing things, that's really just scratching the surface because we have an auxiliary cybersecurity flotilla. These are folks that are national leaders in cybersecurity in their day jobs, and they volunteer you know, their free time to help out to secure the nation uh, in, in uh, important ways. You guys are an Arctic university, right? I learned about that today. We have auxiliarists that traveled, circumnavigated North America on board the Coast Guard Cutter Healy and served as part of the crew there. They didn't get paid for it, but they had a heck of a trip, the trip of a lifetime, right? Nine months. I got to sail with them just for a mile up the Chesapeake. It was kind of cheating, but, uh, but it was a lot of fun. Um, so at Commodore Mo and to our auxiliary team, thanks so much for all your leadership and thanks for making uh, this possible. I'd also like to recognize uh, our uh, main maritime uh, graduates. Uh, and so we have a number of them uh, wearing the uniform. So if you're a Coasty, current Coasty or former Coasty, and you're a main maritime graduate or faculty or uh, captain of a, of a beautiful ship down there, stand up for a second so we can see uh, who you are and what you do. Do you know this guy? Yeah? Is he the real deal? Is he the real deal? I guess so. I think he thinks you're the real deal. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, hey, I, I did that uh, not only to say thanks to our folks, but so you can see all the different folks here and the different careers that they've uh, served in. And we're so thrilled, Owen, to have you come all the way up from uh, Sector Virginia for this. What a great opportunity to have you here tonight. Commander Matt Meskin, who uh, runs prevention in, in land area. Matt and I served together about 15 years ago in Charleston when Matt was uh, really kind of fresh out of uh, Maine Maritime. Uh, at that point, and, and Matt's done amazing things in his career. And so this is an opportunity for you guys, after you're done, listen to me, Blab, uh, to engage with some of those folks and find out a little bit about what they do, all right? Let me also recognize somebody that's really special to me, and that's Master Chief Tony Martinez, all right? Um, I talked about the 11,000 women and men that work uh, in the 1st Coast Guard District, and they need somebody that's advocating on their behalf. And so we're very fortunate that we have a uh, Command Master Chief in the 1st Coast Guard District. Our Command Master Chief is uh, Master Chief uh, Mike Ingham. Mike's on some very uh, much uh, needed and well-deserved R&R. And so uh, Master Chief Tony Martinez um, uh, volunteered to help out on this trip and uh, serve as our uh, representative for the 1st District members up here as we travel through here. Tony's got a day job. He, he represents uh, for all the uh, um, uh, Coast Guard uh, women and men that work down on the Cape uh, in Southeast New England. Uh, but more importantly, Tony's a big uh, D1 sailor and has uh, been stationed up in Eastport and has uh, worked, uh, has had command of both a ship and a uh, shore unit and has done a lot of really neat things with his career. And so I'd encourage you to spend some time uh, talking with Tony as well. One of the things that I think um, really makes uh, this special uh, today uh, going forward is that we're cut from the same cloth, right? The Coast Guard and Maine Maritime. So what do I mean about that? Maine Maritime has a set of core values that are based on honor, loyalty, and devotion to duty, right? And what does loyalty mean in that, in that regard, right? It's about um, the, the character that you display with others, right? Understanding that. Well, you know what the Coast Guard's core values are? Let me give you a guess on the first one. Haley, what do you think? Honor. Yeah. All right. We're one for one so far, right? See the alignment? Um, second one is respect which is really kind of the same meaning that you guys use in loyalty. And then what's the third one, do you think, for the Coast Guard? M3, you know it? Devotion to duty. Absolutely, right? A lot of similarities between our organizations there. And then let's think about your motto. Motto, dear I go, right? Did I get it right? I know I don't pronounce it like a Mainer. But uh, close enough? You want to correct me on that one in the back there? No, no? You let me go? All right, thanks, thanks. And what does that mean? It means I lead, 
And we saw a tremendous example of that. We heard about that. We heard about Auxilaris Ethan Dorval. Hadn't even come to uh, Maine Maritime yet. But when he got there, he embraced the idea of, I lead. I can do this. I can make a change here at this university. I can make a change uh, for our service, for our nation. I will lead that change. In the first Coast Guard District, my command uh, guidance to the troops is be the first to lead, right? The first Coast Guard District is where it all started for our nation. Our organizational DNA comes from these communities uh, throughout New England, right? Now, we'll spend a lot of time because my headquarters in Boston talking about how it all started in Boston, right? But uh, you can go down to New York and you'll hear about Alexander Hamilton and maybe that's really where it all started down there, right? I'm not gonna rap for you, I'm not gonna sing the song or anything like that, but it's a pretty cool song. Um, but it's, it's about our history. It's about the people from these communities along the coast of New England who looked for opportunities to help out their nation, to help out the mariners, to be a part of our maritime nation and our growth over time, all right? And so today within the first Coast Guard District, if you look behind me, you can see some of the missions that we're leading today. We're ensuring the safety, security, and sustainability of our nation's waters, of New England's waters. And why are we doing that? Because it's tremendously important um, for our country, right? Uh, when we talk about how important the maritime transportation system is, uh, I was on board Marcus Hanna earlier today. Does anybody know who Marcus Hanna was? Marcus Hanna is a ship now, it's a Coast Guard ship. Does anybody know who Marcus Hanna was? All right, so yeah, he's still on watch. Thank you. I appreciate that, Dr. Kellogg. I know you, I know you know who he is. All right, so Marcus Hanna was a lighthouse keeper in the late 1800s who was from Bristol, Maine, all right? And uh, he went off and served uh, during uh, the Civil War uh, for uh, the Massachusetts, uh, for a uh, Army regiment out of Massachusetts. And while he served in the Civil War, he earned the Congressional Medal of Honor. Um, but after uh, the war was over and he went back up to Maine, uh, he was appointed to be a lighthouse keeper uh, for um, the light there in uh, Bristol. And then eventually, uh, a couple years later, he moved down to uh, Portland uh, where he was a lighthouse keeper for Cape Elizabeth. And one dark stormy night, every good story starts with one dark stormy night, right? There I was. No, we won't say that word, but no kidding. You know, there I was. Um, uh, there was a uh, small ship that uh, uh, wrecked off the coast, and Marcus Hanna went out into the wintertime uh, and saved uh, two lives. And for that, he earned the Congressional uh, Medal of Honor. So again, this, or I'm sorry, he earned the uh, Gold Life Saving Medal. And so he's the only uh, American that's earned both the Gold Life Saving Medal and the Congressional Medal of Honor. He's a member of this community, right? A member, uh, part of our history, part of our legacy. And today I was on board uh, Marcus Hanna, and Marcus Hanna is a buoy tender that works off of the coast here in New England. And, and the crew on board ensure the safety uh, and security of our waterways uh, here in New England. I was asking him, why is your job so important? And, and one of the uh, supply petty officers on board said, you know, it's really uh, how we get clothes, right? All of the trade that comes through into the U.S., it's how we put the clothes on our back. Uh, it's how we put the shoes on our feet through the maritime transportation system. In some cases, it's how we put food on the table, right? That's how important this resource is. And so the Coast Guard's looking out for the safety, security, and stewardship of that maritime transportation system. And so whether you affiliate with the maritime industry after graduation, and there's some great jobs, and we talked to plenty of uh, uh, great midshipmen today that are interested in sailing and, and uh, have some opportunities ahead for them, uh, or you affiliate with the Coast Guard as an active duty member, as a reserve member, as an auxiliary member, as a civilian member, uh, you have a big opportunity to help out your nation. And so I'm really excited that you've taken this first step uh, first of all, that you've come to this academy, that you've expressed an interest in protecting and, and uh, working in this vital resource that is the maritime transportation system. Really grateful that you've made that first step. But I'm especially proud of your interest in the Coast Guard and your desire to help out uh, your community, to help out your nation, 
and demonstrate that through uh, your affiliation uh, with the Coast Guard. So thanks so much for doing that. All right. Well, I think, uh, you know, as we look to uh, the future, uh, uh, President uh, Admiral Paul, I really see unlimited opportunity here. I was so impressed with uh, all of uh, the facilities and all of the interest uh, that's going on. And so I look forward to uh, providing our support from across the First Coast Guard District uh, to make sure that uh, we have uh, opportunities uh, for uh, your students on the FTXs uh, during the summer uh, and have opportunities uh, to meet and affiliate with other Coast Guard. But thank you so much for uh, all the work that you're doing. And lastly, to our uh, faculty and friends and moms and dads over in the audience in here, thanks for encouraging uh, our young members and supporting them along the way on their journey. Really grateful for the work that you're doing. So with that, let me just say Semper Paratus, always prepared. Um, but let me see if you guys got any questions uh, you know, of me from uh, your experience, or we'll get Master Chief up here and he'll tell you some great stories. It was a dark and stormy night, and no kidding, there I was, you know? All right, any, any questions, any thoughts, anything on your mind? No? You guys want to get to studying and get to uh, some homework and stuff like that? All right. Well, thanks so much, Russ. I'll turn the program back over to you, all right? Thank you, sir. All right. Admiral, thank you very much uh, for taking time to be here and uh, for once again joining in the standing up. This is, the, for those that don't know, I'm sorry for the mistake earlier, uh, this is the second chartering event in a row, two days in a row. First one was at Norwich University, over on the other side of northern New England, and then today. He's been busy, but it's been great to have his leadership uh, for this important moment, so thank you for being here. Now to close the ceremony, I'm gonna ask that the, uh, those members of the Coast Guard, those Coast Guard veterans, Coast Guard auxiliarists, and members of the AUP, uh, on the back of your uh, programs, I have given you a cheat sheet for the verse, first verse and chorus of Semper Paratus. Please all stand. Um, I have to cue it up. Keep your fingers crossed. The sound system's ready. I want to hear you loud and clear. <laughs> And Far East, the flag is carried by our ships in time of war and peace. And never have we struck it yet in spite of foreman's might, who cheered our crews and cheered again for showing how to fight. Chief. You want something done? Get the Master Chief. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this ceremony. Thank you again all for being here. Please join us for refreshments and a social time. There are parting gifts. If any of the, uh, let's make sure we have enough first for the uh, students of the AUP over by Lieutenant JG. Thank you again. Good luck. <laughs>